Yeah, 2PAPA51, I'm with uh, so PAPA11. Uh, if it isn't code 3, uh, make it code 3. Yeah. Police, can you hear me? Did any of you guys see him here oh. at all? Yeah. He just walked up and dropped. Okay. And did you see if he hit his head on the way down, or? Well, no, the girl said that he didn't. Okay. Yeah, she was walking straight behind him. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, super pen pupils. Yeah. He is breathing. Yeah. Keep your eyes open there. And if you're wondering who the Odd Squad are and what they do, that is just a little bit of uh, some of their work. We're joined now by Toby Hinton, who you saw in the clip, and Al Arsenal, the Cole founders. How are you guys? Hi, guys. How are you? Great. Thank you. Thanks. Toby, nice to see you, as always. let's start off explaining what we were looking at there. Uh, what is that from? Uh, that's a heroin overdose. It happened a few months ago, and that was a clip that was picked up from the Beat reality series. So we're in just finishing off season two uh, with that. And um, it's uh, part of the, you, you know, the drug problem we're uh, yeah. sort of tasked with dealing with every night. It's the reality that you deal with. Al, maybe tell us about the, for people that aren't familiar with the Odd Squad, uh, and especially the history of the Odd Squad, I think a lot of people have heard the name, but I explain the history and how the Odd Squad got started. Uh, we started... Uh Fifteen years ago, actually, having our fifteenth year fundraiser. Yeah, all uh, of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you guys are fifteen years together. Too. We're yeah, all well, old together. Double anniversary. Um, and um, actually, uh, it was uh, I was taking pictures on and off throughout my whole career, and then uh, actually, uh, Toby and I end up working on the same squad, and he was doing some uh, guest lecturing at uh, University College of the Fraser Valley, and uh, he was showing his his uh, overhead. Pin maps, you know, basically of all the where all the beanies are and the theft models, like really yeah. exciting. <laughs> so, you know, he's trying to describe. So you're boring the a, hell out of everybody. A yeah. presentation. So he's trying to describe, describe all this life and death on the street. And then uh, we had a beatman's reunion. I showed him the slides. He goes, "Oh, you got to come uh, to my next lecture," and we did, and um, was had a great impact. And we went from there into videos, and here we are. Today. You're retired now from the active force, yeah. but uh, still involved, obviously, in all kinds of different policing aspects. But how much did this add to your career, seeing this every day and being able to communicate this message to younger people as as prevention, and and dealing with it, and you know, dealing with it during your day job, but then going and seeing the result that that this message maybe had to change kids' lives. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, watching life and death and the loss of human potential is uh, is affected me greatly. And then we're lucky enough to document. We still continue to document it because it is an important message. Because this, uh, Heather was a real living, um, yeah, was breathing well, human know. being. Yeah, yeah and uh, she wanted to be something, and the drugs took her off on. A, you know, deadly tangent. It's interesting because you can see that loss of prevention or potential when she's talking, but then maybe the other side of that for you guys, Toby, is is that there's a, a you know, there's a, a, a regaining of potential for a kid that sees that along the line, and maybe they were going off the track. There, so. um, you know, a lot of the people that we have relationships with are very generous with their uh, time in, in a miserable place. Like they, they're obviously not feeling well. They're not eating well. They're they're um, living on the street and, and not happy with themselves. But uh, I think that uh, by, by uh, giving them a platform where they, they can talk directly to kids, uh, they, they re, uh, start gaining a bit of uh, mm -hmm. self-worth and dignity. And, and uh, it, it, uh, I think they recognize that, that, that their message has a lot of value as well, difference. too. Uh, because in, in Heather's case, uh, that was probably a tough, very tough interview for her, and uh, yet she uh, knew we were going to go out and do presentations and, and talk to younger kids. And, and if she, she couldn't wanted change to. herself, maybe she could help change someone yeah. else's Exactly. Choices. That's the one maybe. common virtuous quality that most addicts have. They don't want to see anybody else falling in their footsteps, especially younger people. So. And we have to quickly touch on gangs as well. And you guys uh, had a little bit of a trip not too long ago to the Arctic. And maybe you can tell us what yeah. you guys are doing in that regard. The Odd Squad's become so big in so many <laughs> different aspects to it as well. Yeah, in uh, 2008, we ended up uh, picking up uh, Doug Spencer, Elvis Bellia, and a few other the gang experts from uh, VPD, and, and uh, they joined up, and uh, they have a very similar presentation to our drug presentation, uh, and they talk about uh, the reality of gangs, and so that 
work takes us all over. It, there isn't a gang problem per se in the north, but a lot of the kids from the north are going to come down to a major city center, whether it's Edmonton, Calgary, Winnipeg, Vancouver, and they're going to end up uh, being exposed to this stuff. And so the community leaders want their kids educated about some of the realities and the outcomes uh, that can happen. and, and uh, so we get requests uh, from all over. The trip to the Arctic is is one example. There is probably the only community in the world that wasn't affected by drugs and, uh, and mind-altering substances was the North and the Inuit people, and that's totally changed now. Yeah. So, so they require a lot of education too. Well, guys, you continue to do amazing work, uh, not only locally but now around the world as well, and spreading a great message. Congratulations on 15 years. Their fundraiser is sold out, it's but that's a out. great story. But they are celebrating yeah. 15 years with a gala fundraiser. Thursday, June 7th, if you're going, you'll have a great time. It's at the VCC, the Vancouver Convention Center. Youth Ambassadors will also be awarded medals at the fundraiser.